Hey everybody, Zach here for the Friday Fishing Report for Pacific Angler. Uh, this week we're going to do something a little different for the tutorial. Um, it's not going to be a fly, but it is something that you tie in a hook. So, uh, if you talked to us in the shop the last year and a bit, I guess, uh, we've all really gotten into, into twitching jigs. Um, it is pretty greasy, I only felt a little dirty uh, filming this video, so I'll probably just wash my hands and I'll be good after that. So, twitching is uh, kind of taken the Pacific Northwest by storm here, um, here in BC. So they're pretty simple to tie, they're a lot of fun, they're deadly effective too. They work for coho, springs, pinks, chum, like you name it, it will catch it. Um, so it's pretty fun to have a good variety of these. Uh, you don't really have to worry about color too much. It's something you can play around with and make up as you go along, which is kind of cool. That's one thing I like about fly tying in general is I can get the exact colors that I want and I can experiment. So. That's the beauty of twitching too. Um, so we got some awesome jig heads from Big Sky. Um, we've got a variety of colors. A couple of them have glow properties to them as well, so they're pretty sweet. Uh, something that sets our, us apart from our competition. So definitely let's uh, head on down to the vise and get this guy going. Let's get to it. Twitching jigs. The itch to twitch. Uh, so this one I'm calling the nightmare jig. Uh, that's kind of what it looks like. Red, black, white collar. Trademarks of any nightmare lure that's ever been produced. Pretty simple things to tie. Uh, we've got these awesome custom jig heads from Big Sky over... I'm not going to tell you where because then our competition knows. Um, here's another one that I've done as well. Purple and chartreuse. Kind of cool. So we got them in two sizes. These, this is the half ounce. These are the three eighths, a little bit smaller. Um, good to have a variety. So the beauty of twitching jigs, there's no real magic color. Um, everything pretty much works. So let's get to it. Uh, so for thread, we want to go heavier. Uh, so 140 denier, 210, um, UTC 140, Danville 140. This is a 210 that I've got kicking around from something. Um, this is just white, and this is just an accent color, so it can be whatever color you want it to be. So we're just going to dress that hook shank with threads. So we've got a good base to tie on. Like I said, these patterns aren't very difficult. Um, time in a variety of colors. Let your imagination go crazy. So I'm going to take my thread just before it starts to go down the bend, so just a little bit kind of in between the start of the barb and the hook point. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our tail. So for tail, this one will be in black and red. Two-tone, rabbit strips, black and red. Um, I've had these forever. I, it's what happens when you start tying flies and stuff. You start accumulating materials, you never use half of it. So it's been kind of fun to uh, rediscover materials that I bought way, way back. So. I've got a big chunk here, as you can see, I've already tied with this one, so the way I like to prep this, I like to take a little bit of the fur off the hide and just rip it off. So that gives me a nice tie-in point, like so. And I tie mine a little bit differently, so the ones at the shop, they're all tied with the rabbit strip reversed, so the flowy part here is actually on the bottom of the jig. So when these ride, they're going to be like this. It's probably just the fly tire in me, I like to have everything flowing as it should. I don't think it really makes a difference. Uh, for speed was a thing, I would tie that in directly on top. Me and the OCD that I have as a fly tire, I'm going to do it the right way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself, so I got my tie-in point about there, I'm going to puncture the hide back here right in the middle through the hook point. Just be careful when you do this so you don't stab yourself. These are big hooks. So I punctured it. I'm going to take the hook out of my vise. I'm just going to wiggle that around like so. And then I'm going to clamp it back into the jaws. Just line that up right like so. And just for the tying in portion, I'm going to orient my vise upside down. And I'm going to tie that in on what, as we tie, this is going to be the bottom, but this is actually the top of the shank. So I'm going to give a couple of good wraps, just nice and loose, and then come in. This is 210, I am not going to break this stuff. And I'm going to crank it down pretty tight. 
Now for tail length, I like it generally, give or take, about the length of the hook shank. You can go a little bit further if you want, which I'm going to do in this case. So hopefully you can see this on camera. I'm just going to pull the fibers down so they're straight up and down. I'm going to give myself a little bit more than I think I need. I'm going to come in with my scissors. I'm going to cut that just like so. so it's kind of like that. Now, to get better flow out of a tail and any rabbit strip in general, I'm going to come back in here. And again, make sure all the, the rabbit's flowing down. And I'm going to cut it on an angle. So I'm going to come in, trim it like so. So now I've got a point. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. That just tapers the rabbit out, allows it to flow a little freer. And a little trick here that I'm going to show you. So one issue with twitching jigs a lot is hooks, uh, the, the tail will foul on the hook. And then you don't get the right movement of it flowing through the water. So there's a couple of different ways to combat this. I'm going to do the easy way. Uh, this is an old tarpon fly trick. I'm going to take some super glue. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of the hide with some glue. I'm going to pull it straight because as that sinks in, it's actually going to cause it to shrink a little bit. So I'm going to pull it out straight and as it sets, this stiffens up this back portion. So now the rest of it can flow free, but that portion right there is pretty stiff. It's not going to twist super close to the shank. I actually might add another dab right where the rabbit meets the hook shank. So I'll kind of rotate that for you. Hopefully you can see that darker portion. That's where the glue is seeped into the hide. So now that base is pretty stiff and it's a lot flowier at the back end, which is what we want. So that's our first portion tied in. Like I said, these go together pretty quick, so there's not much to them. Um, next thing is going to be some chenille. So this is like polar chenille. This is stuff they don't make anymore, so if you can find it, grab it. It's Senyo's Aqua Veil Chenille Chocolate Covered Cherry. This stuff has the weirdest names, um, but it fits the theme. It's black and red, which is kind of cool. So the thing with polar chenille, polymer chenilles, you always want to tie it with the fibers pointing down. We do this because then when we wrap it around the shank, it actually pushes everything back. So I'm going to tie that in. And I'm going to use this for about half of the hook shank here. So we're going to use a fair amount of it, just like so. So when I pull it straight up, I can stroke the fibers back. I'm just going to do touching turns all the way up the hook shank, like so. This is where you can kind of layer different colors and stuff. It's kind of fun to play with this stuff. And we keep going. This is just going to add a bit of flash to the fly. There's many different ways to tie these. This is just a simple base to get you guys started. And probably one more wrap. Like so. I'm going to take two wraps behind the chenille. Two wraps in front. And I'm going to trim that guy off. I'm just going to lick my fingers there. Stroke all these fibers back to kind of control them a little bit. I'm going to wrap back on them just a touch really secure everything in place. That's not going anywhere. Now we're going to tie in our rubber legs. So these are some crazy legs. I like these because they're two-toned. Again, fitting the theme black and red. And they come in a big chunk. And what I like to do, I like to separate three strands from the chunk and I keep them attached. It just enables them, uh, makes it easier to maneuver them and coordinate where they're going to go. So I'm just basically going to fold that in half and I'm going to trim them right in the middle. So the red parts of the tips, I'm going to have those extending kind of right around the base of the uh, of the hide there. So I'm going to tie in three on my side. There's many ways to do these. Some of the commercially tied ones, they've got a whole clump of them tied on the back here. I don't really like that as much. I like them on the side. You can do it however you want. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to get those tips extending if I can. Extending to the base of the hide. 
should be somewhere around there. Three on your side, three on my side. Just some loose wraps to kind of cinch the stuff in place. And once I get them in there, some nice tight securing wraps. Those aren't going to go anywhere. Once I get them tied in, I can pull both ends back and I can trim them there. Now I got three loose rubber legs hanging out. Now the final part of this fly, I'm say let's go together pretty quick. Cross cut, two stone or two toned, once again, red black. Play around with this stuff. Um, with the colors that you want again. I've taken off a chunk of the hide there, so I have this nice secure tying point. Once again, tie that in fairly tight there. And cross cut wraps really nicely, which is nice. So, literally, I'm going to wrap away from myself here. I'm going to do slightly overlapping turns so it builds up a little bit of bulk. Get a lot of color. Kind of like so. And we just keep going. One more good one at the end here. Come in with that thread. Cinch it down right at the base of the jig head. Two turns, hopefully it's still in focus. A couple wraps to secure it on this side. I'm going to trim that in kind of flush if I can. So I got a little nub there, that's totally fine because now I'm going to build up a thread collar. And this one to fit the th theme. I'm going to stick with the white thread. I like red for, or white thread for a lot of my flies because if I want to change the color quickly, I can just add some Sharpie to it. And the Sharpie stays pretty good when you coat it with a resin or super glue like we're going to do in this case. So I built up a nice thread collar there. You can see how nicely that sits back. Now for finishing the fly, there's the standard whip finisher which is quite small and I find it really struggles to get over this, this head and how much stuff is there. So I've got an extended one here. These are a little bit bigger. Good to have both sizes. And I'm just going to do... Oops, that keeps rotating on me. I can do three turns. I'm only going to do one whip finish because I'm going to coat it with super glue. That's really going to secure everything in place. Trim that kind of close if I can find the end. There we go. Now I'm going to come in with some brushable super glue. Stroke all that rabbit back. Get rid of the excess. I'm just going to lightly coat all my thread wraps. Just going to make sure nothing comes unraveled. You're bouncing this off rocks and stuff like that. You don't want it to be get too beat up. Or it will get beat up, so you want it to last. There you have it. There's our finished twitching jig. There's, that's how it's going to ride. I'll just let that super glue dry and away you go. So that's got a lot of movement in the tails. You can see the rubber legs are going to add some movement as well. And that rabbit is going to pulse in the water as you're, as you're twitching it through, through the water column. There you go. Nightmare Twitching Jing.